people. In today's Amigurumi tutorial, we'll crochet this little European robin. I received several requests for a European robin and I had started this pattern ages ago and then halfway through I gave up because um, it took quite some time to get the color changes sorted out. Um, but thankfully, some of you reminded me of it and that just inspired me to pick it up and finish it and I'm so glad that I did because I really love those little birds. I know that many of you don't have European robins where you live so um, I hope that you still enjoy this tutorial. Um, you can use it, maybe you want to make a European robin anyway, but um, if not you can use it to make any other kind of little chubby bird because there are so many birds that have this cute round shape. For example, um, you could make a yellow um, canary bird or just get creative and use all kinds of different colors. So I hope you crochet along with me and in the description above I will not include the color changes so everybody can place the color changes wherever they like but um, you can still watch and uh, listen to what I say to follow along and make the color changes for this little European robin. I just want to squeeze in a little message for my Spanish speaking friends on here. So if you want to jump to the um, project then you can open the description box below and click the blue clickable timestamp for the material section so that you can jump straight to the materials and then get started with the little European Robin. It's just that I receive so many comments um, to please translate my patterns into all kinds of languages um, but most of them ask for a Spanish translation and just know I um, I take note of all of them whether it's um, Turkish, Russian or um, sometimes or Portuguese or sometimes Italian or French um, I take note of all of them and I hope that it's something that I can do in future um, because most of them ask for Spanish trans translations. I thought I'd just um, put out a little message in case you don't understand, understand me when I talk English. So, Hola amigas y amigos de Sudamérica, Centroamérica y España. Recibo tantos comentarios de ustedes para traducir mis patrones al español. Solo quería hacerles saber que lo escucho y tan pronto como pueda, pueda contratar a alguien para que escriba subtítulos, subtítulos en español, lo haré. Lamentablemente. Lamentablemente no tengo suficiente tiempo y necesito confiar en Google para traducir al español. Yo mismo soy alemán, pero no tengo tiempo para traducir mis patrones al alemán. Solo sé que estoy trabajando en ello y a medida que mi canal crezca y pueda pagarlo, lo haré por ustedes. Muchas gracias por estar aquí. Besitos. For this project we need DK or light worsted weight yarn. And I'm using Rico Creative Rikurumi. The shades I'm using are light brown. So this is shade 52. Um, and I have a tiny bit left of the color Fox. I used most of it for the little Fox. So <laughs> I have this much left and I hope it will be enough for the red chest. Then a uh, light gray color. Um, this shade is called pearl grey and then cream just 
like a natural white color. If I if this won't be enough, I'll just use the regular orange. But I hope I hope this will be enough because I really like this shade for the um, chest of our little robin. And as I mentioned in the beginning, you can use this pattern to make a canary bird or any kind of um, chubby little bird that you like. So feel free to be super creative with the colors. Then we need a 2.5 millimeter hook, something in between a B1 and C2. If you crochet tightly, go for a C2. If you tend to crochet more loosely, I recommend going for a B1 or simply 2.5 millimeter if that's available to you. Then we need fiber fill, a yarn needle, stitch marker, and if you like, you can use safety eyes. These are four millimeters in diameter, so tiny little safety eyes. Um, if you prefer, you could embroider the eyes with black yarn or embroidery thread. And then if you want to make wire feet for your little robin or other bird, then um, you'll need wire and it should be at least one millimeter thick. So I'm using this craft wire that has a brass color and it's quite sturdy. So it looks thin, but it's quite sturdy so that it can hold the weight of the little bird. And then we'll also need something to cut the wire. Maybe your household scissors will be enough. Um, so this is kind of optional. And then we need some pliers to um, fold them. Sometimes when people don't have pliers, they use um, their hands and that works as well. It may be easier with pliers, but don't worry if you don't have them. You probably can bend the wire well enough with your fingers. So don't sweat it if you don't have pliers. We start with the light brown yarn. As you can see, I undid my previous project too. <laughs> that was to save the little amount of red, rusty red colored yarn. <laughs> so we start with a magic ring. And then in round one, we single crochet six in the magic ring. One, two, three, four, five, six, close the magic ring. And then in round two, we increase in all six stitches. First one I always get wrong. <laughs> There we go. Increase in all six stitches. So then we'll have a round of 12. That's four, five, um, six, sorry, eight, Ten, and 12. If you haven't already, you can tighten the magic ring more closely now. And now I'll put my stitch marker in the last stitch. And in the next round, we keep increasing. So we single crochet one in the next stitch and then increase in the next stitch. And we repeat this five more times, increasing in every other stitch, so that we'll have a round of 18 stitches in the end.
Here we go. In the next round, we bring in the red color. So, just pull my loop out. And I make a little loop with this one because we'll join it in the first stitch. I'm just trying to save as much as I can. So I won't have a long yarn in here. <laughs> that should be fine. And if you're making a yellow canary, um, canary or canary bird, I, I don't know, I never know how to pronounce it in English. <laughs> if you're making any other kind of bird, just feel free to continue in one color only or in whichever color you want to make it. So for the little robin, I change it to red. So in the next stitch, I start with the light brown, pull the loop through, and then I finish this single crochet in red. So I pop my little red loop on and pull it through. Pull the brown yarn tight. And now, because later we'll need the brown yarn again, we need to carry it with us. So we'll crochet around it. And every time I do this, I usually hold the yarn like this. I separate the two colors with my with the knuckle of my index finger and then I hold them in place with my ring and pinky finger so that I have enough tension on them and then the yarn that I'm using at the moment is on top and the one that's crocheted in is below it. So then we single crochet the next four stitches in red and so we go through the next stitch here and then we go underneath the light brown yarn, pick up the red, pull it through underneath the brown yarn and then we go over the light brown yarn to pick up the red yarn and pull it through the two loops. So let's repeat that slowly again. The next stitch First we go underneath the light brown yarn that we are working into our stitches. Then we pick up the red yarn, pull it through underneath the light brown yarn. And for the second part, we go over the brown yarn to pick up the red yarn and pull it through over the brown yarn and then through the two loops. So this way it gets worked into the stitches and later when we need it, we have it to hand. That's three and four. And in the next stitch we increase. So here we make two single crochet in a red in the same stitch. Let's see what happens next. Then we single crochet three more. One, two, three. And then in the next single crochet, we change back to brown. So we start with red. And then for the second part, we pick up the brown yarn and pull it through the two loops. And then for the rest of the round, brown is our dominant color. So I switch them around. So now I have brown on top and red below. And we single crochet one in brown. So now we go underneath the red yarn, pick up the brown, pull it underneath the red yarn, pull it through the stitch, and then 
go on top of the red yarn to pick up the brown yarn, pull it through the loop. So that was one. Then the next one is an increase. So two stitches in here. And then we have single crochet five. Once in a while you can pull, carefully pull the yarn that's being worked in just so it doesn't pop out in between the stitches, but don't pull too tight because otherwise it will distort the shape. Two, three, four, five, and then the last one we make an increase. in there and that's round four done and now we have a round of 21 stitches. Round five starts with a color change to red so we start the stitch in brown and then we pick up red and we switch colors So now red goes on top, then we single crochet five, and increase in the next stitch. Two in here, and then we single crochet three, one, two, three. Now we change it to brown. So We switch positions again, then we single crochet two, increase, single crochet six, and increase in the last stitch. And that's round five done. In round six, we'll join the gray yarn. So I'll just pull my loop out a little here to prepare my little gray loop so now it gets a little bit more complicated but don't worry about it <laughs> we'll go through it slowly so in the first stitch we change to gray, so we start the stitch in brown, meanwhile we still crochet around the red yarn, so we pick up the brown yarn, pull it through, then I'll leave this there for now, and then I pop on the gray loop that I just made, and pull it through the two loops. For now, we'll only crochet one stitch in gray, but I'll show you what I usually do anyways. So this 
yarn and can get out of the way. And then since gray is the dominant color now, gray goes on top and the other two, we still work into the stitches and they go together. Just pull the light brown yarn tight so that the stitch doesn't loosen up too much. And this way we crochet around these two colors with the gray yarn. But in this case we only have one because we already changed back to red. So we go through the stitch underneath the red and brown, pick up the gray, pull it through underneath. Then we have two gray loops, but now we pick up the red yarn and pull it through. And now red is the dominant color, so red goes on top. The other two are worked into the stitches. And now we single crochet the next nine stitches in red. So this time we go underneath both of these colors, pick up the red yarn, pull it through underneath the two colors, and then go on top to pick up the red yarn from there. So it's the same thing, just that we have two colors that are worked in at the same time. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Fingers crossed that this will be enough. <laughs> now we change back to gray. So we start in red and then pick up the gray yarn to pull it through the red loops. Now gray goes on top, only for one stitch, but <laughs> I'll do it this way anyway. So then we pick up the gray yarn and we change it to brown. So. Now we have two gray loops and we pick up the brown loop, the brown yarn to pull it through the two gray loops. And the rest of the round will be in brown. So now brown goes on top. And now we single crochet in the next two stitches. One and two. Then we increase then we single crochet three one two three and increase and once more one, two, three, and in the last stitch we increase and at the same time we change to gray. So the first single crochet will be completely in brown and the second single crochet that goes in, a, in the same stitch we, we will change to gray. So we start with brown and then we pick up the gray yarn. So now we have the round complete. We have 27 stitches now. And the next round we start with gray. So we start with two single crochet in gray. one and two and in the next single crochet we change to red so pick up gray and pick up red so now red goes on top then we single crochet 
five. One, two, three, four, five, and in the next stitch we increase. One and two, Then we single crochet one and change to gray in the next single crochet. So gray, a red, and then gray. So now gray goes on top and we single crochet two in gray. One and two. And in the next single crochet, we change to brown. So gray and then brown. Then we single crochet three. One, two, three. Then we increase then we single crochet in the next eight one two three oops four five Six, seven, eight, and in the last stitch we increase and we change color at the same time again, this time in the first single crochet. So the first single crochet we change to gray, so we start with brown and Continue with gray. And then we make another single crochet in the same stitch in gray. And that's the round complete. So now our round has 30 stitches. Round eight starts with three single crochet. One, two, three, and then we change to red. Just make sure the gray one is put tight. Then we single crochet five, one, two, three, four, five, and we increase. And in the next single crochet, we change to gray. So first red, and then gray. And these two are a little bit twisted. I need to detangle them soon. Otherwise, it will get really difficult. <laughs> so now gray is on top. Then we single crochet four in gray. One, two, three, four, 
two, three, four, and next we change to brown. So gray, and then brown, Then we single crochet three, one, two, three. Then we increase. And then we single crochet eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then we change it to gray the next single crochet and pulling the brown yarn tight in the last stitch we increase one and two oops There we go, so now our round has 33 stitches. Round 9 is the last round in which we'll be using red, so fingers crossed that it will be enough. Um, so we start with 3 single crochet in grey. And then we change to red. So pick up grey and pick up red. Now we single crochet six. One, two, three, four. Five and six, then we increase so two in here, and in the next single crochet, we change to gray. So pick up the gray yarn. Whew. <laughs> I have this much left. <laughs> So, my worry was completely unnecessary. <laughs> so, you can now continue to crochet around the red yarn because that somehow um, weaves it in and secures it so that this last red stitch doesn't loosen up too much so now we have five single crochet in gray one two three four five And now we can change to brown. And you can leave the gray yarn now. Just leave it there. So where were we? Light brown. 
Then we single crochet three. One, two, and three. And increase. And then we single crochet eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we change to gray. And we single crochet one. And increase in the last stitch. So now our round is 36 stitches and we're done increasing. Now, can you hear the pigeon? <laughs> We have so many wood pigeons here, apart from robins and blackbirds. So, in the next round, we join the white or cream color yarn. So, I'll pull my loop out And make a little loop in white ready to join. There we go. And we start with three single crochet in gray. One two, three, and then we, chain, uh, we join the white yarn, so start with gray, and then we put on the white loop, pull that through, and try to keep the, this yarn end out of the way. And pull the gray yarn tight. Now we have three colors again. So the white goes on top and the brown and gray goes here below it. So now we single crochet eight. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I really need a yarn ball. <laughs> then we change to gray. Start with white, finish with gray. Now gray goes on top. Then we single crochet six. One, two, three, four, five. Six and we change to brown in the next stitch. So brown goes on top, white and gray go beneath. Then we single crochet twelve. One, two, three. 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve. Let's actually make it 13. Just change the pattern spontaneously. <laughs> In the next stitch we change to gray. And then we have four single crochet left. One, two, three, And four. Round 11 starts with two single crochet in gray. Then we change to white. So gray. And then white. Next we have a 10 single crochet in white. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine and ten. There we go. And the next single crochet we change to gray. And we single crochet five in gray. One, two, three, four, five. And the next single crochet we change to brown. Now we single crochet in the next 13 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. What did I say? <laughs> Thirteen, right? Eleven, should be eleven actually. Sorry. <laughs> so here we actually change to white instead of gray so in the last brown stitch there we change to white and we don't need the gray yarn anymore actually we don't need the brown yarn anymore either we will later for the tail and wings but i just want to crochet in for a bit to secure it, but we can cut off the gray here because 
we've just crocheted in quite a bit and then we complete the round in white so the gray can be can go there and so we have four single crochet left in white There we go. Round 12 will be solely crocheted in white, but I'm keeping the brown yarn for a bit to crochet around it. So we'll make 25 single crochet in white. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and here I'll cut off the brown. And leave it here inside. All these yarn is going to go inside. So that was 14, right? 15, 16, 17, 18. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. Let's just check if that looks correct. It does. So now we will chain five and skip five stitches. This way we create an opening at the center back here for the tail. And it will be white on the bottom and brown on top. So we will have the color change. Change is perfectly aligned hopefully. Um, so it's important because maybe your tension is different especially with all these um, different color changes. Everyone has different tension so maybe for you the five stitches are not in the back now so it's important that they're in the back so you can if you want you can place a stitch marker in the stitch that aligns with the center back and then you know where to start this um, opening so maybe you are at this point you are here so this would be too far, so you would have to undo two or three stitches. Maybe you are still here, and this means you would have to do a few more stitches. So it's important that this um, opening goes where the five center stitches are on the back. So one, two, three, four, five. So the third one is the center one. And that aligns with the center back here for me. I could move it more toward this side. Maybe I'll do it. Maybe it looks better this way. Just try. You can. I'll just put this in here and then I can see if that's the center or this one. I think this is more centered. So I'll undo one stitch. So it's actually 24 now for. In my in my case but it really can vary a lot from person to person and it's perfectly normal so now we chain five and skip five 
one, two, three, four, five. And then we single crochet in the remaining stitches. So for me, this should be seven now. Now I'll secure my stitch because next we can insert the safety eyes. And we can also check if it looks right, this opening fits at the back. You can even fold it so that these corners align. And then you can see if the, for example, if the red, where the red starts here, if that aligns now. And this way you can hopefully see if the placement is right. I think that's fine for me. So we can now insert the safety eyes or you may want to embroider the eyes. Also, um, now, if your beak has a different color than the back, then you may want to attach the beak now. So I'll just show you how to crochet the beak. For the robin, the European robin, I'm using the same color yarn as the back. And so I can attach it in the end and weave in the yarn ends on the back and Hopefully it won't be visible, or even here on the side, anywhere where I use the brown color. However, if your beak has a completely different color than the back or side or any part of the bird, then I suggest that you attach it now and tie the ends together inside the head so that they won't be visible in the end. So I'll just show you how to make the beak now. It's so quick and easy. We just make a little loop and then we chain two and single crochet one in the second chain and that's it tiny tiny beak I'll leave the yarn end a bit longer and that's it so I'll keep mine for later but I'll show you what to do if you want to attach it now, if yours is in a contrast color. But first I suggest placing the safety eyes, so all these yarn ends will move out for now. And the safety eyes go between around 4 and 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and they are quite at the end of this red part. So I would say one goes here, so there's still a little bit red on the side. And the other one, I would say goes here. So there should be six stitches in between. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's more seven for me now. But I think it's right. If you're unsure if it's right, it will make much more sense when the beak is attached. So even though you may not want to attach it now, you can do it temporarily just to check if the eyes look okay. Because then you have the full picture. I just don't want to attach mine yet. I'll just show you in case you have a different color beak. Because if there is a way to attach it later, I think it's better because sometimes I attach it before and then I crochet and sew body parts on and work on the bird and it loosens up a bit and then it's not as neat and um, tightly attached as I would like it to. But if you use a different color, I still recommend it. So we choose the two or the stitch that's um, centered in between the, the eyes and we the beak, beak also goes in between round four and five 
And so on each side of the center stitch, we insert one yarn end of the beak. So one and the other one goes right next to it. And now we can see already how it looks and that will help us determine if the eyes are right. So I think this looks good from this side. And this side looks all right as well. So that's where I'll keep the eyes. If you want to attach the beak now, you can just um, tightly tie these two ends together inside the head there. I will attach mine later, so I'll remove it for now. And then if you're happy with the placement of the safety eyes, you can secure them. So now that the eyes are attached, it looks a bit funny now, but trust me, it will look cute with the beak. I just saw that. So we can push all, the all these yarn ends in the head, use them as stuffing to have them out of the way. And now we start decreasing. So in round 14, oh no, we're at round 13 now, sorry. In round 13, we single crochet four And then we decrease. So we go in the front loop of the next stitch and the front loop of the next stitch. Pick up the yarn, pull it through the front loops, pick up the yarn again and pull it through the remaining two loops. And we repeat the series of stitches six times all together. four and decrease. I'm doing the whole round together with you because um, where we have the chains that it might be a bit tricky there. I just treat the chains as regular stitches so I'll show you what to do. That's four and Three, four, and decrease. And now in the chains, so I just go in the back loop of the chains. Doesn't matter if you catch one or two loops. One, two, three, four, and now we treat the next chain as a regular stitch, so I just decrease this one as well. So I just go in the back loop though, not in the front loop, because the front loop I will need later when I want to join the yarn to crochet the tail. So I go in the back loop of the chain and then bring my hook forward to insert it in the front loop of the next stitch. Maybe your chains are in a different place than mine so maybe you will have to make a decrease with two chains so then you would go in the back loop in the back loops of both chains to do the decrease So mine is with one chain and one single crochet. I can show you in case, let me just show you in case yours is in a different position. Let's say your decrease goes here. Just go in the back loop of the next chain and the back loop of the next chain so you can get 
you can hook under it. So hook, hook your hook in between the front and back loop and you can turn it 180 degrees. This way it usually gets under the back loop and then pull the loop through the two back loops and pick it up and pull it through the two remaining loops. So that's in case your decrease falls on two chains. So I had one single crochet here, one single crochet here and then the decrease with the last chain and the first single crochet on the other side here. There we go. And then once more. One, two, three, four, and decrease. So now our round has 30 stitches. You can now start filling the head and body if you like. I just put in a little bit for now and more later. And in the next round we keep decreasing and this time it's pretty straightforward because we have proper stitches to work in here. So we just single crochet three and decrease and we repeat this five more times, six times all together until the end of the round and then we'll have 24 stitches. To each round I'll add a little more fiber fill now. Now in the next round we single crochet two and decrease And we repeat this six times all together again so that we'll have 18 stitches once the round is complete. Now I'll add much more fiber fill. You can still add more after the next round but now it's easier to edit. Just make sure it's evenly distributed, a little bit more. So in the next round we single crochet one and decrease and as before we repeat this six times all together so that we'll have 12 stitches once the round is done
that's the round done and I'll add a little bit more fiber for now. I like to use the back of my hook to push it in if the opening isn't too big anymore. That should be enough. So now we just have one more round to go for the body. And we simply decrease six times. in the filling four five And six. That's great. So now we can fasten off and close the round. So we take our yarn needle now, thread the yarn end on, and we just go through the front loops of all six stitches. But don't pull tight just yet. First we go through all six front loops. And now we can pull tight. And then we go through the center of this last round. And pull that in just so that the surface evens out here. And then we weave in this yarn end. George. and that's the body done so now we continue with the tail and for the tail we need to join the brown yarn and the white yarn we'll only use the white yarn for a little bit and we start with the brown yarn but I already make a little loop ready in white so that we have it to hand when we need it. That's it. Then brown loop and we join the brown yarn here in between stitches. So we have these five stitches and then the other side of the five chains that we made here. But we want to crochet 12 stitches out of this round. So one stitch we'll make on each side, just in the side of this single crochet, this one. So I'll just go in there 
in the side of this. And we start with brown. So pull on the brown loop, pull it through. And now we start with these five single crochet here. So we single crochet one in each of them. One, two, three, four, and five. Now the next step is a little bit complicated. Um, so the next stitch goes here in this side of this stitch again and also we change to white so just go in this in the side of this stitch and this may be tricky if this doesn't work you can also go in the same stitch again that we already crocheted in, in this round where we made the chains and skipped the stitches um, that's another thing you can do, so just go in here again. That's what I'm doing because this one is tricky. And then we pull the brown loop through it. So now we have two brown loops. Then we pop on the white loop and pull it through the two brown loops. Pulling the brown yarn tight so it doesn't loosen up too much and now we crochet with two colors so the next five stitches go in the other side of the five chains that we made here so you can see these loops so one will go in here and here and here and then wherever you have the um, decrease that we made in the chains there it will probably look a bit different and although we made a decrease we still want to crochet five stitches out of these um, chains so here where I made my decrease I can't really see a loop but I'll just get in there and crochet a stitch out of there anyway and I tried to crochet around the brown yarn in white. That's one, two, oops, three, four. And there we go, five. And then the last stitch goes in this place here where we joined the brown yarn in the beginning. And we crochet in here and we change to brown here. So start with white and then pull the brown yarn through the white loops. So now we have brown on top again and the next round we repeat the same thing so we single crochet the next five stitches in brown one three four and five then in the next single crochet we change to white start with brown pick up white then we single crochet five in white. One, two, three, 
three, four, five, and in the last stitch of the round, we change to brown. There we go. Now in round three, we single crochet two, And then we decrease so we go through the front loop and then the next front loop pick up the brown yarn up under the white put it through and then go on top of the white pick up the brown yarn again Then we single crochet one and change to white in the next single crochet. Then we start with a decrease. So and we go under the brown yarn, pick up the white yarn, pull it through underneath the brown, pull it through the front loops, go on top, pick up the white yarn and pull it through the two loops. Then we single crochet two one and two and decrease again. At the same time, we change it to brown. So it's not as tricky as it sounds. We just um, go through the two front loops as usual. And first pick up the white yarn, put it through the front loops, then pick up the brown yarn, put it through the two loops. And now we continue just in brown, but I'll still crochet the white yarn in for a bit just to secure it this way. Now we crochet five rounds of nine single crochet. So for one round I will crochet around the white yarn still. It's two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Off now the white yarn and I'll also hide all of these yarn ends in there. I'll have to use my scissors for this so I'll just carefully push them in to use them as stuffing and also to have them out of the way. Apart from this, I don't think the tail needs to be stuffed. Actually, I want it to be quite flat, so in the end I'll probably push it to flatten it. So this little bit can be stuffed with the yarn ends, but that's enough. So that was 
one round of nine single crochet done round four and we have four more to go so you can pause the video here and once you crochet four more rounds of nine single crochet so round five to eight you can hit play that's round eight done so now we'll have one more round in which we single crochet one and then decrease one and we repeat this three times all together two more times one single crochet and one decrease and one single crochet and one decrease so now we have a round of six and we can fasten off here and close the round so like we did before we thread the yarn in on our yarn needle and go through all six front loops pull that tight and then go through the center of the round And then we weave in the yarn end. short and that's the tail done now we crochet the wings in brown and we start with a long yarn end to sew them on later on so I'll leave that about 30 centimeters long 12 inches and the wings are crocheted in rows so we start with a chain and with a loop I mean and then we chain two and in row one we single crochet or we increase actually in the second chain there one and two then we chain one and turn in row two we increase in both stitches one and two in stitch number one and one and two in stitch number two chain one and turn now we have four stitches and in the next five rounds five rows we single crochet in all four of them one two three or chain one that was row three one two three four chain one and turn that was row four one two three four chain one and turn that was row five one two three four chain one and turn that was row six and once more in all four
chain one and turn, and that was row seven. Now, in the next row, we single crochet one, skip one, and single crochet in the remaining two stitches. And we chain one and turn, that was row eight. And now in row nine, we single crochet one, skip one, and single crochet in the last stitch. Chain one and turn. And now for two rows, we single crochet in both stitches, chain one and turn. Actually just one row, the next one we skip the first stitch and single crochet in the last stitch, chain one and single crochet in the one stitch that we have left. That's it, so now we crochet all around the wing. So I believe we have 12 rows now. And so we single crochet 12 in the side of each row. The first one goes in the same stitch that we just crocheted in. Just more toward the side. Then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Crows, we also have a lot of. <laughs> I don't know if you just heard them. So just pull that just to make sure that it doesn't curl. Then we single crochet two in the other side of the base chains here. So one in here, the same stitch that we already crocheted in, and one here in the next one. And then down the other side to the tip of the wing. So one goes in the same stitch that we just crocheted in. That's one, and then one in the side of each row. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then in here we single crochet twelve to get a nice uh, two, I mean, to get a nice tip for the wing. Then we can fasten off. And now we make an invisible finish. So we need our yarn needle. And we skip the next stitch and go in the next one. And then we insert our needle in the front in between the front and back loop of the last stitch that we crochet. And this way we have a neat looking finish here. So it's not really clear where the round begins and ends. And then we just need to weave this yarn end in. So now we can seal in the wings. They're almost identical, so it um, doesn't matter which one on which side. And maybe I should have mentioned pins, that you may need pins. You may want to pin the wings in place. I'll add that later. <laughs> just makes it a little bit easier 
So I align the top of the wing here with the this gray corner so that that is just gonna be fairly visible. And then I'd like it to point this way so that we can see a little bit of the white of the tail here. This way, so you can experiment with it and have a look at what you think looks best. And then we can start sewing. So find a stitch on the body and try to place it underneath the wing so that it will be hidden, especially with the gray part. You don't want the stitches to be very obvious. So once that's done, then you can go through the wing again. And then through the next stitch on the body is closed to the wing or even underneath it slightly as possible. And the next stitch of the wing. So there we have a tiny stitch there. I think that looks okay. And again through the body. Two more stitches or so, then we move on to the other side. One more stitch through the body here. And through the wing. And now a uh, stitch. I will enter where I just um, exited with my last stitch and then I'll move on to the other side. Um, here, let's say here. I think we don't need the pin anymore. So let's maybe one, two, three, four almost five stitches or a four from here should count so four stitches wide stitch to get to the other side of the back side of the wing and now we sew up to the shoulder so to speak so we go through the stitch of the wing that aligns with the wear our yarn and is now trying not to split the yarn though and then one stitch through the body and one stitch through the wing So this way I have a little bit space under the wing so that it's not completely flat. 
but if you prefer you can sew it and completely flat then you could have stitched further toward the back to do that if you prefer that Only a few stitches left. Once more, I go through the wing. This one I also feel needs to be kind of sewn on. Yeah, that looks better. So then I stitch through. Two wherever I want to weave in this yarn and it looks so silly without beak but we'll change that in a bit <laughs> So now we just weave in this yarn end and then we repeat the same steps on the other side with the other wing. The wings are soon on now, but I leave the beak to last because first I'm going to attach and shape the feet. So if you don't add wire feet then you can jump to the part of the of attaching the beak um, if you don't have wire you can always um, make a little loop attach it to the top of the head and just hang your little robin as an ornament so you can go to whichever minute I'm going to put here for the beak or open the description box to click on the timestamp for the beak but if you're making wire feet stick around because that's what we'll do next so I have an about 30 centimeter long piece of craft wire, 12 inches, and I just hook this on my yarn needle in this way because it's probably difficult to get this through the stitches unless you have a very sturdy one that maybe you won't need the needle. And then I go through, I have a look where the <clears throat> last round is here and move one round backward and then I make a small stitch maybe that's one centimeter or a little bit wider just make sure that it's where you want the feet to go let's double check it needs to be wider one stitch wider that looks better so, and pull that through, that's the tricky part. There we go. And we can straighten this. And now the wire is moving around, of course. We can fix this later with the glue, if, if you look. I'm going to stop that from happening. We can add some glue here later on. Now we just bend the wire so that both ends are about the same length. 
should be fine. And then their feet are kind of, or their legs are kind of forward pointing. That's why I joined this, the wire so far in the back. And they seem quite long, the legs. Um, since they're pointing forward, I think they can be about one inch long. I'm just guessing here, I'm not really measuring. So just do what feels right. It's, I think it's almost an inch. So I bend the wire forward on both sides. And by the way, you can do this also with your fingers if you don't have pliers, so don't worry about that. Now, at about one centimeter, I bend the wire backwards. I do part of it with my hands anyway. And just squeeze this a little closer together. Then here at the last, at the first band that we have, there I'm going to fold it back forward again. And then at the same length, or maybe a little bit longer for the middle toe, so to speak, I'll send it. I'll send it. I'll bend it backward again and make this loop a little tighter. And then at the same length as before, I fold it forward again. And then at the same length, I fold it toward the back again, squeezing this a little bit. Now I make this little toe in the back. So now I bend it here and again at about one centimeter. I think 0 0.4 inches. I bend it back forward and I try to squeeze this together. So it's one foot done. Now, before I finish, I do the other side just to make sure they look more or less the same before I finish. In case I need to make changes. So I started with the inner toe and I do the same on the other side. Start with the inner toe at about one centimeter. I fold the wire back like so. Squeeze together then here at the I want to call it here but I'm not sure what it's called I'll bend it forward again And at the same length or a little bit longer, I oops, hope you can see what I'm doing here. I'm so focusing on the task. <laughs> Squeeze it together, and that's toe number two done. 
then we fold it forward again sometimes you can flatten them if they are pointed in all kinds of directions and then about one centimeter length again bend this one toward the back and squeeze it a bit then bend it slightly so that it's pointing backward then we fold the little back toe um, toward the center like we did with the other one and then squeeze this one a little bit as well mm -hmm. and if they look more or less the same which I think they do then we can wrap this end around the leg if you're really good with this you could do all of this with a longer piece of wire and then wrap it around all the way up the leg that would look really neat I think but anyway the robins they have quite delicate legs so I think I like the simple one wire leg <laughs> I'll just oops I'll just rip it around once without messing up the feet hopefully <laughs> Oh, this was the back. Oh, <laughs> that's why it looks funny. This was the front, and this was the back toe. Okay. So I just wrap the yarn end around once. And here I'll do the same around here just hold this back toe in place while I wrap it around this way squeeze everything into position and then first let's see if it works bend them forward I think that will work so once you're sure that everything's okay with the legs you don't need any more wire you can Um, clip it off here. <laughs> there we go. And that's the feet done. Just want to flatten everything a bit. That's it. Then I have them pointing forward this way, and then I can use the tail to stand as well. But it definitely needs gluing. Not definitely, I mean, it's fine, but I'd like them to be more in position. 
so that they stay in this position. So I'll add a drop of glue on each side. So if you're sure that the legs are in the right position, then you can go ahead and put some glue around them. Again, it's not really a toy, this one, so if it's meant as a toy for a little one, then you don't want to add wirings, uh, wire legs anyway. So then also don't add any glue and no safety eyes. But if it's meant to be an ornament, then it should be fine. Double checking that the legs are in the right position. And if they are, you can let this dry. And then all that's left is attaching the beak. So I just came back from grocery shopping and <laughs> let this dry in the meantime. And now they're in position. We can still change. You know, bend them if necessary, but they don't move back and forth anymore or from side to side, so that's really good. So now our little Robin can stand. And of course, it still needs a beak. That's very important. So that's the last detail that we'll add. So just start with one side. And where did I place it before? Here and here. So you can figure out um, one side goes here and the other side goes here. Let's see how that looks. You can always change it later. So it should be fine. And then the other yarn end will go through here. Let's see if that's centered. I think that's looking good. Yay! <laughs> so now we just need to weave these ends in to secure the beak and then our little robin is done. Should be enough. Then the other side. Fine, and then we just 
cut these short and give it a little squeeze. Our little robin is complete now. Oh, I just love them so much. So glad that I have my own crochet version now. I hope you feel the same. Thank you so so much for crocheting along with me. I hope you enjoyed this little project. If you did, feel free to give this video a big thumbs up for me and make sure to subscribe to my channel and to turn on notifications so you won't miss any of my future Amigurumi tutorials. Thank you so much for being here. Bye!